Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2022 Grant Management Seminar for District 6220. I'm Sally Davis. I'm with the Marquette Rotary Club, and um, I am the chair of the District Grant Committee. Nancy Lohberger is with us, and she is that nice, brilliant M that you see. Her, her um, internet's a little unstable. So Nancy, do you want to say hi to everyone? Hi, everybody. I am uh, the chair for the District Project Fund. Glad everybody could be here tonight. Okay, so we can do this in an hour or less so we can all get on with our lives. Um, so I don't know if we need to do any housekeeping. I think we're all real used to Zoom by this time in the, in the uh, world. Um, but ask questions in the chat room. Lisa's recording um, questions and Nancy's keeping an eye on it. And also in the um, email that you got with the Zoom link, Lisa put in the, the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding. If you intend to do a grant, that needs to be signed by your president and your president-elect. So get a hold of that. So the reason that we're doing this is because it's a requirement uh, for getting any of the district grants or the district project funds. And this grant management seminar really focuses on just those two, the district project fund and the district grants. If you are intending to do a, a global grant, tune into tomorrow night. They are a whole different animal, a little more complex, and you really need a very specific training for that. So this, this does serve as one of the prerequisites for obtaining a grant. We'll talk about the different kinds of grants and uh, particularly the two that we just talked, just mentioned and review some of the things that you have to do beforehand. And um, well, we wanna convince you to submit a grant and to confirm the, that the donations to the foundation are worth it because if we don't donate to the foundation, we don't have money to give out for the grants. So the question is, will your club have a share of the 28,569 pool of district grant money or the pool of 16,963 district project fund money. Those two numbers are lower this year than they have been for many years. And that is because our, our district three years ago didn't give as much money as we had in previous years. So keep that in mind. Um, so, the purpose of a Rotary Grant, as far as I'm concerned, is to leverage your club's funding. I mean, you're, you're all doing things in the community that really contribute to the community. And this is a way to double the money that you can spend on whatever project you're looking at. And it's always nice to partner with other organizations, and most clubs do, um, to give additional leverage. Uh, and it enhances your club's impact and makes you very visible to the community. And um, obviously, any invisibility of, of our clubs helps us with our image and to gain membership. So here we go. These are the types of grants that are available to Rotary Clubs. The district project funds, which Nancy is in charge of, and I'm sorry that these all sound so alike, uh, particularly these first two, but this is a very special group of funds that Nancy will talk about, and she'll talk about how we get them not all districts have these funds. Ours is kind of a special district. And then there's a the district grants. And this is these grants um, are made possible. In fact, after the district grants, all of those others are made possible because we as Rotarians donate to the Rotary Foundation. So this is money that when we donate to the Rotary Foundation comes back to us to use in our communities. So the district grants are things that I, um, have I uh, had the committee on. Then we have the global funds. Again, if you are interested in a global grant, um, make sure that you're part of tomorrow's um, training for that. But under the global grants, there's, uh, there's humanitarian projects, there's vocational training teams, there's global scholarships, there's Rotary Peace Fellowships. And those are all described if you go into the district grant, 6220 RI district, ri6220.org, and then also at, on the more global Rotary um, page is a, the Grants for Projects of Scale, which is where Rotary now gives out really large grants, and those are only a few, if maybe just one a year. So the district project funds and the district grants, um, Nancy and I years ago got 
together and decided why is it so complicated? Let's make it pretty easy. So both grants can be accessed through one guideline document, one application form, and one report form. You don't have to be confused about where which form you're trying to get to. And again, I'm going to tell you that at our district website, you'll find all of these things, along with a lot of other um, documents and information regarding grants. So let's take a look at this grant comparison guide. And I'm going to pretty much ignore the global grant because I'm not sure that's even real accurate at this year, I, there's been some changes. But you've got the district project fund and you've got the district grant. Both of them match dollar for dollar for whatever uh, clubs in our district, whatever dollar you put in will get matched for per dollar. The minimum grant for a district project fund is whatever you want. And in fact, I noticed on Nancy's list, she had one that was what, $70 or something. I don't know why you would write a grant for that, but yeah, Indeed. you could write a grant for $50 if you want and double it and have $100 to do something with. The, maxim, the maximum for the district project fund is 2,599 if you're only one club. If you work with another club, you can max those grants out at 5,000. Um, so if, if between maybe you and another club uh, put in 5,000, we can match it with 5,000 and now you've got a project worth $10,000. The district grant, so you'll notice that the 2,599, once you hit that level, you want to really go for a district grant. So the minimum amount of money that you can request in a district grant is 2,600. The maximum for one club, if you're only going to, if you're going to go solo, is 7,500. So if your club wants to put in 7,500 for a project, we can double that and you've got a $15,000 project for your community or actually internationally you can go to. The maximum grant for um, multiple clubs, and again, they have to be clubs within our district, is 15,000. So you could have a $30,000 project for your community or for a project internationally. So both of them can be local within your community. Both of them can be outside of uh, our district, which is 6220, or they could be international, and we do get those. Um, they don't need community assessments like a global grant does, so that's why that NA is there. And both of them can be applied on this one, we applied for on this one form that's available on our district website. So here's the other thing. Um, the grants that Nancy manages, the district project fund, you can apply for any time during the year, except you want to be a little early so that she doesn't run out of money before your application comes in. But she'll talk about that a little later. The, the district grants, we require them to be turned in by May 15th. So that's why we do this training at this time of the year. Um, and um, I'll talk about that a little bit more. If we have any money left over, then I can accept some grants after May 15th. But that is when you, where you want to get your district grant in is May 15th uh, so that we can put it into actually it goes into our district's budget to the Rotary Foundation. Um, you can have more than one grant. You can, both of them, you can have two grants if you want. You can, you know, maybe be a principal on one and a, a, a participant on the other grant, uh, but you know, it's limited to two. The other thing that people forget about when they actually get the grant is that you have to tell us how you're doing. So um, the district project funds, you have to report annually by April 1st until your project is complete. The district grants, um, I'm gonna require every six months. And, and if you don't send me a report, I kind of bug you. And some of you already know that. The, and here's the thing when you, you ha your reports have to be up to date. So if, you get, if we get a grant request or application, one of the things we checked is to see if you're up to date with all of your reports. Okay, so on the district website, here are the things that you're going to find. Uh, the guidelines for District 6220, the district grants and district project fund, both the application form and the report form. You will find information on the global grants. In fact, it really will direct you to the RI, the Rotary International website. 
And there are other links that um, you really want to make sure that you know about the Global Grant Scholarship. If you have an outstanding student that you might want to recommend for the scholarship, the vocational training teams, and the Rotary Peace Fellowship. So common qualifications are what I think of as prerequisites for any of these grants is that you have to have a grant management training. And so this training will fulfill your requirement for the district project funds and for the district grants. But if you're going, again, if you're gonna go after a global grant, you wanna make sure that you're at the training tomorrow. You have to have a signed MOU or Memorandum of, of Understanding. And again, Nancy added, or yeah, Lisa added that um, in the email that she sent to you. So check that out for your attachment. That gets signed and it gets sent to Lisa. Um, and Lisa's information is on the district website, so you can find her there. Uh, so again, I already mentioned the reports have to be current. Your dues have to be current. And sometimes clubs get stuck in that. Maybe the treasurer forgot to send in the dues, so make sure that your dues are current. And, and here's the other thing is that we want to see Rotary Foundation support of at least $50 per capita. So it's, this doesn't happen with global grants. For the district project fund and the district grants, this is something that we check. And it's um, something that we have no control over. You have control over it. And we can't make exceptions. We check on the um, foundation reports that are available to us through the, the main Rotary International website. Uh, and they're very unforgiving. If you don't get your money in and have it recorded by June 30th, you might not have made that $50 average per uh, member. So there's also some common requirements. Um, projects have to support the goals and mission of Rotary. That's not too easy. That's not too hard to do because we do that all the time. You have to have active participation of Rotarians. So you can't just give money to an organization. We want to see what your club and your Rotarians are doing in terms of a hands-on or some sort of part, active participation in the project. And again, these are project grants. Um, if you're going internationally, make sure that you respect the host area's tradition and culture. Here's another one that people get hung up on is that sustain, sustainability. Several years ago, Rotary would give out grants and then the projects were like not even existent after a year or two. So we want to know, and you're going to have to respond to this in the application, is how is this going to be sustainable? How uh, is it going to last for several years so that we know that we have put our money in a good place? And then you can't ask for a grant from Nancy from the same ask, the grant that you're going to ask for me, and then the same grant that you're going to ask for global grants. You know, if you're going to go after money for a project, figure out what is the most appropriate grant application to do, and don't try to get the same project funded through the different areas. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, so let me go back to it. Maybe some of you have taken the grant application and put it up on your screen or are familiar with it. The first part is really easy. You check a box. Do you want the district project fund or district grant? And it'll even say what the guidelines are in terms of the amount of money you can request for that. Is it local or is it outside of our district? And then you provide basic information, the contact information, the project location, where is this project gonna be held? If you have a cooperating organization and a lot of clubs um, work with a city or to maybe they're doing a trail or some municipal um, department, or maybe they're working with another organization in town. So if you have a cooperating organization, we want to know about that organization. If it is a district grant, you need to know what area of rotary focus that you're looking or you're trying to um, deal with. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about the areas of focus. There are seven of them. I don't think that there's any projects that Rotarians do that don't fit into one of those areas of focus. And then there's some authorizations that you have to just, you know, you say, I will absolutely run this grant as you require. There's, there's some documents you have to sign. 
you even you even say that you are going to um, report to me every now and then. <laughs> okay, so here's the guts, the real guts of the grant application. And this is what everyone thinks of as a little harder. Um, and if you're used to writing grants, it's gonna look real familiar. If you're not used to writing grants, this is the this is the guts that you have to give some thought to. The first one is the need or the problem. And this is always amazes me how difficult this is for people. The need is not that I'm going to build a new bridge for North Country Trail. That is not a need. That is what you're going to do. What is the need? And it might be the need is that this, this bridge is in disrepair or you know something, but really think, Think about the why. If you have a project that you're going to do, why are you doing it? And then if you think you've got that why, ask yourself again, but why am I doing it? And if you think you've got the answer now, ask again, why am I doing it? You might, by the third time you ask yourself, why do, is this important for us to do? You might have identified your need. This is one of the biggest problems I see in grants. And Sometimes we let that go, um, but I'll tell you what, this year is gonna be competitive. There's a lot of interest. I'm already getting calls about grants and so is Nancy, and we have less money than we had previously. So make sure, and if you want help identifying your need, I'm happy to help you with that. So then the next thing is your objectives. So, um, I, oh, sorry, I think my husband's getting that. <laughs> So you need to put in your objectives and your objectives are not actions because you're going to list your actions next, but objectives, or you can think of them as goals, is what am I trying to accomplish? Um, and it think again, uh, that objective needs to address your need. So if the need is, oh, I bet they should have thought about this beforehand. If the need is, um, this particular playground is a safety hazard to children. Your objective might be to have a safe and appropriate um, play outdoor play area for children to increase health. It, you know, but give it some thought. It's not just build a playground. So your action time, the thing that you then talk about is your action. So again, people have trouble with this. So let's let's go back to the playground because I'm going to come up with some slides with that later. Your action is that you're going to work with the city to identify um, the playground equipment, and you're going to order the equipment, and then you're it's going to you're going to take care of all of the brush and bad stuff on the playground area, and then you're going to install the equipment, and then you're going to paint something else. So break that down as much as you can and put a timeline on it. it you know, a, a general month is fine. But again, this is something that people try to just kind of get away with. It's like, well, we're going to do it by August. Well, tell me how those steps are going to happen. So then the next thing you need to talk about is sustainability. So how is this playground going to be um, kept up? Who's going to do it? And it might be that the Rotarians have um, chosen this playground as um, one of their major focuses. And they're, every spring, they're going to get in there and clean it up and make sure that all of the things are, are safely done. Or it might be that it might be the city or some other organization's responsibility to sustain it. But please address that sustainability. How are we going to know if that particular trail or playground or whatever you're going to do, um, dock in the water for swimming, whatever, uh, is going to be still there in 10 years. We well, do need to address the Rotarian involvement. What exactly are the Rotarians going to be doing? You know, maybe they're going to be painting the library or building shelves for the library, um, or maybe unpacking the playground equipment and whatever. But, but let us know how the Rotarians are going to be involved. Lastly, the budget. Another difficult area for people. So the budget is not just uh, $15,000. That doesn't do it for us. So we want to know what exactly you're going to be spending the money on. And so 
the suggestion is a spreadsheet, but we don't need any real complex spreadsheet. We want to know what expenses you're going to have and a list of them. And um, this particular piece of equipment is going to cost this much. And this particular, you know, this much we're going to spend on painting and this much we're going to be. So give us some budget. Now, of course, it doesn't always end up that way, but that's what you report on in your final report. So you're going to list the expenses, but we also want you to list how you're going to pay for those expenses. Where does the money come from? So it might be that your club is going to give a particular amount, another club is going to give another amount, and then you're going to double those that amount of money with a district grant. And then maybe you still have some expenses left over and you're gonna do some additional fundraising or you've got another organization that's going to throw in some money but somehow the expenses need to match the income and we're when we do need to see both the expenses and the income so i just have a caveat there about involvement and sustainability because we over the last couple of years we've been focusing on that more than normal and no virginia we will not fund a capital campaign it's I get a lot of requests for capital campaigns, especially if, let's say, um, the library is going to do a new renovation and they're running a capital campaign and your Rotary Club wants to give some money and they want to do double that money through um, a district grant. It's not going to work. So one of the things I recommend to you is if you, if you find yourself in that situation, you give me a call because I can usually walk you through something that will work for that situation. It might be, well, tell me what part of that library that Rotary wants as a project and how are you going to, how are you going to be involved? And it, it's, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we do not fund capital campaigns. Your capital campaign or anybody else's capital campaign. Um, so I mentioned that district grants need to align with one of the seven areas of focus. Um, in addition to that, international projects, if you're going to do one, must have a host partner. And that host partner must put at least um, $100 into the project. We, you need to include some sort of a signage identifying grant sponsors. Um, and it's, it's usually pretty easy to do and you want to do that locally anyway, so your club gets um, credit for doing something good in the community. I don't know if that's a requirement for uh, the district project fund grants, but Nancy can talk about that later, but it is for the district grants and it is for the global grants. Um, you will be asked to sign some attestation and include that is a conflict of interest policy. And there's a lot of other requirements that are detailed in this document that's available to you on the um, on the website, the our district website. It's called Terms and Conditions for Rotary Foundation District and Global Grants. It actually is not one of our district requirements. It is an international uh, document, and um, a lot of clubs don't bother to read this. You'll get caught in something if you don't. It, it's good to just take a look at it, but you or you could give me a call and I can just kind of talk to you through some of those. And I'm going to um, tell you a little bit about some of them. Oh, before I do that, here are your seven your seven areas of focus. And as a Rotarian, I hope you know these: peace and peace building and conflict, uh, basic education and literacy, disease prevention, water sanitation community economic development, that's often where the district grants lie. Maternal and child health, that's another area that often gets addressed with district grants. Supporting the environment, that's your new one and um, it'd be a great thing to do in your community. Um, well, I guess I wasn't gonna do what I thought I was gonna do first, but let me just tell you about how, how the money flows from the Rotary Foundation, like the Rotary Foundation. And when we as Rotarians contribute and we maybe get our Paul Harris fellowship, whatever, uh, but this is how it works for our funding of our district grants. And I know this slide is a little old, um, but let's say in 2015 to 2016, there were 37 clubs in our district 
and all be, among all the clubs, we contributed the 134,247. That gets invested for three years at the Rotary Foundation. And so once that money is invested and has grown, we take it and we divide it 50 50. 50% 50 goes to the World Fund, 50% goes to our district designated funds. That's when, if you ever hear the DDF from Rotary, that's a district de designated funds. So that money that we contributed three years ago, uh, we get 50% of it, and that turned out to be 67,124. That still gets split between our district grants and the match for global grants. So tonight's um, grant management seminar would be for that 33,562. Unfortunately, it's down to a little over 28,000 this year. Um, and then the match for the global grants, which is probably the same amount um, that we have. But then, well, well, I won't go into that. There's more money for global grants than there is for district grants. We spend all of our district grant money every year. The global grant doesn't. So here's what I thought I was going to say a little while ago. Uh, the district and global grants, and this comes from that document that I told you about earlier, um, that you might want to take a look at the terms and conditions grant um, document. So grants cannot be used to discriminate against any group, no surprise, promote a particular political or religious viewpoint. Sometimes this um, gets promoted in district grants, so we have to fix that. You're not going to be looking at any particular political or religious viewpoint. Um, can't purely support religious functions. Um, Activities that involve abortion or that are undertaken solely for sex determination, again, no surprise. Um, fund the purchase of arms or ammunition, no surprise. Um, or serve as a new contribution to the foundation or another Rotary Foundation grant. Um, we also cannot fund fundraising activities. And that's something else that people often ask about. Well, we're going to be you know, looking at this big project and we just want to put some money into it. That's not going to work. Again, I already mentioned that we don't fund capital can campaigns, unrestricted cash donations. So if you have like a women's center and you just want to just give them some money for their operations, it doesn't work. Um, these are project grants. Uh, we cannot fund the establishment of a foundation, continuous or excessive support of a beneficiary, uh, so you can take a project, they can take a, a trail, uh, and this has happened with district grants, your community or your club is going to put together a trail through whatever woods you've got, and this is going to be phase one, and you complete that, and then the next year you want to do phase two, that is acceptable. But if you want to take the whole thing and, and, and um, put it all into one grant and try to get more money the following year, it won't work. We can't buy land or buildings. Uh, we cannot do public relations, except there are some, unless it's essential to the project. And one that I can think of is um, one of the clubs did a big rotary welcome sign to the community and, and the way that they told that story, it worked. Um, and you know, signs are required, but we don't allow project signs in excess of $500. We don't, uh, we don't allow just operating expenses. And if you put a grant in that includes operating expenses, we will take that out before we fund it. Um, so spend your money in other player areas for that project. Um, here's another one that have clubs have been caught in, activities for which expenses have already occurred. Um, and sometimes the timing of district grants just doesn't work for your project. So if you have a project that you just needed to do and it needed to start in March, but you can't send the application in until May and you can't even get the money until July, it's not gonna work because you've already started the project. In fact, when I give you, um, if you're lucky enough to get a grant, when I give you your award letter, I say you've been awarded this money and that's when you can start, when you get the official, um, the official letter that you've been awarded the money, that's when you can start the project. That's when you can, even though you don't have the money, you can start it when you have that official notification. And I will give you that notification when I get it from 
the uh, folks down in, in Chicago, uh, the big Rotary Foundation. Okay, and so that the document with more of uh, terms and conditions, there's more we cannot do kinds of things. Um, and hopefully these are the big ones that I catch generally. So district grants, again, due May 15th. Connect with me. I'm here as an advisor before it goes to the committee. And I'll tell you that we've got some very picky people on our committee. And so I can help you get past them. It's not just my decision whether or not your grant gets funded. Um, I can do a quick review and make some recommendations. And, you know, together we can make it easy for the reviewers. I've always, you know, I've taught a lot of grant writing. And one of my number one things is don't piss off the grant reviewers because you want them on your side. So let's get that grant, as, and especially this year because they're going to be more competitive. Let's get it in shape so that it will sail through the review committee. Um, because if you give it to me on May 15th at five o'clock in the afternoon, I can't help you. It is what it is. And that's the grant that will go to the review committee. Make sure that you've checked out your club's qualifications. And I listed those earlier and they are also on um, the, the uh, district website. Um, so once we get those, do, those grants come in to me on May 15th, I put them all into one document. I send them out to the review committee and um, we then get together via Zoom and just kind of chat about how we scored them and how we feel that they are you know, fundable or not fundable. And then we make a decision. We actually don't make a decision, we make a recommendation. And that recommendation gets submitted to the Rotary Foundation. It becomes, it actually becomes part of our district budget. Um, and then once the Rotary Foundation approves our, our recommendations, and you know they haven't not approved our recommendations the five or six years that I've been doing this. Um, so it's generally a good, it's a, it really generally flows through really fast. And in fact, I am always impressed with how fast they respond back to me. I think the holdup is trying to get our committee members together. So we have this due May 15th so that we can make sure that we have all of June to get the committee together and to get our um, grant requests into the Rotary Foundation and that they get it back to us so that by July 1st, with the new Rotary year, you are eligible to get your money. Not all districts work that way, but we want to get you that money as soon as July 1st hits. Um, then, of course, we want a report from you. We, we want to know how this project happened. And you've got two years to do it. And um, I need a report every six months. Sometimes it can be very informal. It's like, hey, we got held up by COVID again, and we can't get the equipment in because, you know, some, some ship is stuck in the Suez Canal or whatever. Um, but eventually we need that report, a final report, and the final report will include your final budget. We like to see pictures of things that you've done. That's kind of fun to do. Uh, so make sure that, so think about your evaluation as you start your grant. Start documenting and start taking pictures as you start your grant project. So here's some, just to give you an idea, here's some current district grants. Um, Houghton for an outdoor music park. I think they might have sent me in their final report, so maybe they're not there. Iron Mountain for the Welcome Center and Rotary Monument. Hancock for a Hancock Memorial Park. Marquette West for Kids Cove 2. Years ago, tw many, many years ago, maybe like 20, Marquette West did a big playground project in Marquette that was called Kids Cove. Well, the project is, I mean, it's in such disrepair and it's very dangerous now, so now they're doing Kids Cove 2. Um, Ishpermine for a Teal Lake Dock Project, Escanaba for a West Side Recreation Area, Phase 2. Remember I said you can do trails in two areas. Appleton Breakfast for the Midwest Regional Coastal Water Project, and Appleton for Early Childhood Intervention. And so you can see the amount of money they got from the district, and that's the match money, so that the clubs are giving the rest of the money for that or finding some way to do that. So here's a sample project. Um, it's a Marquette project, the Hurley Playground. Um, and those first two pictures, you can see 
the disrepair was that this is not the kids' cold. That's a different playground. We're big on playgrounds in Marquette. But you can see that you know the swing set is really bad and the slide was real dangerous. And um, this was uh, $6,000 $6, from the applicant club, uh, $1,500 from the second club. We have three clubs in Marquette, uh, $350 from another club. And then we were able to double that with the district grant. And then to our amazement, other people just started adding money. Um, different rotary, different foundations, local foundations and citizens in the community. So we had this other fundraising that happened. So we ended up with 22,475 for our playground. And we did a whole lot more with the playground than we anticipated. But you can also see that the Rotarians are working there. They're painting the tires, which was the only piece of equipment that we kept in that playground. So, um, Lisa, Nancy, do we have any questions? There were two so like far. Rick's I think they were addressed. Um, Rick one has is, his hand up. Oh, Rick Zahn has his hand up. Yeah, the district project fund. Um, we haven't talked about yet. Oh, Nancy's sure. going to talk about the district project fund next. All right. So, does Rick want to open up and ask his question? Yes, please. Uh, speci specifically, uh, uh, Sally, on this Hurley project you were just showing us. Uh huh. So $22,000 ended up coming in. And the project obvi obviously expanded because I'm guessing that the scope of the project was not $22,000 when the club initially submitted the grant application. Well, actually, it, it, we knew about that other funding, but you know we can't um, we can't double money that doesn't come from a Rotary Club within the district. No, but so, if, but but if your project is going to require some expansion of scope, where you're going to go out and look for other sources, does all of that other money have to be a hundred percent in hand before you no, can submit the district application? That's a great that's a great question because we did have in fact it's the Ishpeming Dock project which was really quite large and um, they were getting money from all kinds of sources it really truly was a rotary project they wanted to fix the beach at Teal Lake and um, so they were asking for rotary money but they were going to several other places they were asking for money and some of them they had already had committed. But their big request was to Michigan's, um, oh, what do they call it? The, the DNR State. Trust Fund. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and so we approved that grant pending notification that that grant was approved. Okay. So, so, so we were we able can, to do we, that. We can craft an application that shows you the total scope of what we want to do exactly how much we're asking for rotary money and where we hope the rest of the money is going to come from. Yeah, but it might be that we will hold your money. And we did with that particular um, project. We held the money. You know, money is generally available soon after July 1st. We held it until late October is when they got notification. Okay, great. That's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sally, when you send the official notification for the global grant, is that when the district has approved it for recommendation to Rotary International, or is that after it's gone through Rotary International and then they've approved it? Yep, that's a good question. So I generally let people know where they are in the process. And this isn't global grant, this is district grant. So once the committee has decided which grants and how much they wanna fund, I let the applicants know what happened at the committee. And then I send a big warning. And, that, and it's really just kind of an informal email that says, well, you've made it, you know, our, our committee has decided to recommend your grant to the Rotary Foundation. Do not spend any money. Do not start the project. You will hear from me again. And then when I send it into the um, Rotary International or the Rotary Foundation, and I get confirmation back that they have been approved. That's when I send a real, a much more formal letter with, you know, basically 
that says this is how much you've got and this now you can start your project you can start spend some of the money and don't forget you have to evaluate it and you have to do these reports and you have committed to all of these things like um that are in the terms and conditions so that it, that's a much more formal letter does that answer your question it does and i have just one more question you mentioned that the host partner must put a hundred dollars into the project how do you assure that you get that hundred dollars? You have it in hand. You've got it someplace where you can prove that, in fact, it's going to go to the project. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> we, we don't get a lot of international projects with the district grants. They mostly go to global. But um, Sridhar, you had a global grant. How did you do that? Uh, in, the, in, your, in, in your evaluation, you have to tell us you got it. But Sridhar? Yes, uh, if you repeat the question uh, so that I can be a little clearer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ah, caught you sleepy. Um, if you have to get $100 from the host or the host club in an international project, how do you assure that you have that? You know, uh, when, when they actually spend the money, in fact, I have done, uh, I think, three district grants like that. Uh, with different clubs uh, in India. And when we budget it, there is a component where they will have to buy some stuff. That is the cash that comes in. So when you look at it, uh, you will see uh, the project cannot be completed without that piece. So you have to carefully look at what they bought, what they you know, supplied so that the project is done. That's the way so, I, yeah. Yeah, so you will put that in your budget and then we actually trust you, you know, there's that whole rotary thing. Um, yeah. And then when you report on the, you do your final report on the project, you report in, in that kind of money coming in and being committed. Okay, so they're not sending the money to the US and then you turn around and um, buy what you need to, they're actually spending that money locally. Uh, let me give you a very simple example. The last one, which we did the, manufacture of recyclable sanitary napkins training. And we provided money for buying the machines, training, and they allocated the space for it where you can. I mean, that space, cost of that space is quite significant. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you are sure, yeah, they have met their part. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Let's move on to the district project funds. And Nancy, you're on. Do you want to show us your face or is your internet, your internet still kind of funky? I'll try it for a little bit, but I'm going to have to remove myself. There she is. Hi, everybody. <laughs> OK, so the district project fund, I'm going to refer to this as DPF moving forward. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, this is a, a grant that is unique to our district. Uh, the way we fund this grant is that when you pay your district dues, um, we take $10 from uh, each Rotarian. And I want to say it's per year, but it might be actually, is that per quarter? I don't know. I think it's per year, but I don't know. Um, as well, this year, we still, as of today, um, still have $4,200 available in DPF funds. Um, however, we have funded um, over $12,000 worth of grants so far this year. So we still have for this, you can submit grants um, for this through, through July. I prefer you not to send them after, I'm sorry, not through July, through June 15th. I prefer that you not send them after the 15th because it just gets too crowded if you will, you can change a slide. Okay, so with the district project fund, um, each club can uh, request a maximum of $2,599. And if you were paying attention, you notice, you'll notice that anything that is $2,600 and above would go to the district, district fund or district grant. Um, again, these are uh, dollar per dollar matches each club on a first come first serve basis um, can receive two, two grants each year. 
you can also um, team up with another club and be a secondary. Um, as Sally mentioned earlier, you can qualify for both local and international, but the key word in this is that it's a project. Um, we're not as, I'm gonna, we're not as strict. I'm gonna sort of use that word as the district fund, but you, you need to be doing something new or have it be um, a new variation to some, if you've been working on like a phase two type of thing. Um, again, you can submit these at any time, but it is first come first serve. So if the funds run out, um, I literally just keep a running list of who has reached out to me. Um, if the money runs out in this particular year, then, and I have subsequent um, applications, what I'll do is I'll reach out to you when the, the new rotary year hits and let you know that it can be considered at that time. And I try to notify you within two to four weeks, but it's always a good, good thing to poke me um, if you haven't heard from me. Uh, and then here's just a list of some of the stuff that we've done so far this year. Um, so Clinton, like we did say that there's no minimum. So you can see Clintonville did um, request uh, uh, an, a grant for $70. And this went to something that's very core to their community. Um, Wapaka submitted two separate grants. Both were international. New London um, did something called Rock the Block. And for the life of me, I can't remember what, it, what that was. But you can see both Anago and Wausau also um, submitted applications. Now, the one on the bottom um, was a combination uh, uh, application between Greater Portage and the Wausau Early Birds Club. And that, so they were able to um, request $5,000 matching um, because they each had applied for $2,500. And this was actually, this is another good um, example of um, working with other, uh, other organizations. Um, it is my understanding that they worked with Catholic Charities to determine what types of things the Afghan refugees at Fort McCoy needed. Um, originally, I think they were looking at doing winter coats, but found that that was not a need. And so then kind of moved that into um, supplying beds for, for newborn babies. There were lots of babies, I guess, that were coming this year. So um, it's just kind of one of the the things that um, kind of illustrates that you can do that here at home as well. So there's lots of things that you can do. Um, I don't know what the next slide is. Ah, question. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Any questions on the district pro project fund at all? Nancy, oh, our club has a um, local foundation. And if the foundation were to provide funds to a particular project, can we then also request matching grants from the district project fund? So you're saying if there's a company, if there's an organization that you're working with, mm -hmm. um, and they have, we'll say $2,500. Can you, as a club, request $2,500? Um, no, we have a local foundation. Our Rotary okay. Club does. OK, so your Rotary has a foundation. Correct. Your Rotary Club has a foundation. Correct. Okay. Yes. So if the foundation were to provide, let's say, $2,500 to a project that we're involved with, um, joint, let's say the Girl Scouts, Mm -hmm. um, would we then be able to request district project funds uh, up to another $2,500 to help support the project? As long as it meets the requirements and your club does, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question with respect to the qualifying conditions that all the $50 per head and all the dues is that for this past year, 22, 23? And so if we make, uh, and can we make a request for 22, for 23, 24 before July 1? 
Um, so your first question, uh, when I look to see if the club has done um, met the Made donation the requirement, um, when I look to do that, I'm this is we are now in the 21-22 year right currently. So okay. for this year, I'm looking for funds from the 2020 to 2021 year. Okay. That's where I get. So um, and then to answer your other question, I think what you meant to ask is can you request, can you today request funds from the 22-23 year, correct? Well, um, yeah. yeah, okay. The um, answer to that would be no. <laughs> if we have to be, we have to be in the rotary year. Okay. That you're requesting the funds for. So the reason that we go with the previous year is because it's, it, and it lasted with the, the district grants, we are reviewing them before the end of this rotary year. Okay. So we can't use this rotary year because okay. I might deny a club who's check is in the mail. <laughs> right, right. So, so we it's have 20, 20, 2021 for, yes. for this past year, 21, 22 for next year. Right. And it's not per person in a club. It's, it's average. It's kind of the average. Okay. And, and I should also clarify that the project doesn't have to take place in the same year, but the funds requested have to come from the pool of that year, if that makes sense. Okay. So, for example, if your club if if your club submits a, a an application today um, for twenty five hundred dollars, but the project isn't expected to take place until say um, say March of next year, then then that's fine. Um, but you can't you can't request funds from the from the next year, the next rotary year. It has to be funds from the current rotary year, if that makes sense. No. <laughs> so so we can, if we make a request, we have, let's say we want to do something in next rotary year, July 1 of this year until June 30th of next year. When okay. can we make, and, and you're talking about getting in line and priority, as, when can you get long, in line? What? As long as the funds are available, you can submit that application today. For next year. For the next rotary year. Okay. Yes. If but you, you cannot, you cannot today ask me for funds for out of the out of the pool of money that will be coming next year. That's what I was trying to say, if that makes sense. Uh, a quick question here. Uh, is it you mentioned one or two clubs. Is it possible for like three or four clubs to go together if you have a big enough project and do like 2,500 from each of them or something? Is that is that a possibility at that level? Well, officially I would say no, but I think that there's a way to, to work that. So if you have a large project, you would want to maybe split pieces of it and say two of the clubs focus on one area and two of the clubs focus on another. And you can let us know that you are, you know, working together. Keep in mind that there's maximums. So the, the district project funds, you can have as many clubs as you want, but the maximum is 5,000. For the district grants, you can have as many clubs as you want, but the maximum is 15,000. Um, Rick, I see that you have your hands up. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on the bonds question and point out that this is the time of year to go into the database, the Rotary database, which every club can do, and see where your club is at on a per capita contribution. So you can take action to either exhort your members to contribute or make a decision if it's close to have the club make a contribution to make sure you're over that um, $50 uh, per capita minimum. So you got a couple months yet to make that happen. Yes, and, and that and is going only to gonna work for that. the following year. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But if you're not, but if you're not watching it and the, and the right. time slips by and you haven't done it, then yep. you're out of luck for a year. Yep. My club, a couple of years ago, we had $49 and 67 cents. That was our per capita. And so we didn't qualify. 
And my club one year had a treasurer that, or a foundation chair that died and a treasurer that had twin babies and no check went in. And we weren't eligible the following year. <laughs> and we had a project we wanted to fund. <laughs> so it happens, it's good to check. But I make a quick, a uh, very quick clarification. Mm -hmm. I have not had the good fortune of seeing Dennis Rader for 10 or 12 years. But Dennis yes. must be using his wife Lavon's computer. So yes, let me I clarify am. that it is in fact Dennis that I have the yes. good fortune to see. Yes, I remember you well, Roger. <clears throat> I will interrupt no more. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Nancy, if, if I can make a comment. Um, <clears throat> There's a discussion, and this will be discussed at the annual business meeting in April at the Osthoff for the Tricon conference. Uh, there's going to be some discussion about raising that $50 to $75. So I would encourage all the members uh, to attend that meeting to discuss whether they feel that that's a good thing or not a good thing. But I know that that is going to be on the, on the table for the business meeting in, in April. I'm glad you brought that up because there are several clubs that don't reach that target now and are in, ineligible for funds. And um, well, you can take it from there because I'm not going to give you my opinion on it, but, uh, but know that fewer clubs will most likely be eligible if that goes through. Uh, I might add to what Tom uh, remarked, the current average for the district has been uh, $69 or so. So uh, it is quite within the striking distance if we take it to $75. But then again, it's the uh, collective decision of the uh, members of the district. Uh, more money we have, more money we can give away. Uh, so as you saw, how much good we were able to do it during the COVID, and that couldn't have happened if we didn't have money. So uh, that's why, please mm -hmm. give it a consideration. There are a couple of clubs, we have virtually no contribution, and they're not asking for any grants either. But as you saw, we exhausted the grants quite a bit uh, in the last two, three years, and to do more good, uh, we have to do better in raising funds. Yeah, and, and uh, Shri, what I would add on that is that the, the, even though we were at an average of 69 right now, this is a per club, per member contribution of at least 50. Yes. It is the and answer. that's really important because as we'll talk about tomorrow night, um, if you don't make that limit, you if you go for a global grant, you cannot contribute district designated funds and get the 80% match from RI for them. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that really adds up. Yeah, I mean, I get the, uh, so does Tom, uh, frequent reports from the zone of the 23 districts, we are second to last in terms of average uh, per person raised. So, uh, so we have to keep that in mind. And uh, you are absolutely correct. Uh, it used to be 100% match from RI, now it is 80% match. And this year we have done very well. It's a topic for tomorrow, the global grant. Uh, we have gone after that because Rotary said, if you do not expend your global grant DDF, we will take it and make some decisions for you. So that's why we became pretty active in the global grant business. And tomorrow I encourage you to join there. Uh, but absolutely, I mean, I think uh, uh, we are a district with so much goodwill and I feel very optimistic that we will be able to increase our fundraising. If there Does are no each more, district, oh, go ahead. Set, Does each district set their own goal? And if that's the case, what is the district average across the nation? Oh, that's good, Judy. 
I, I could hear you clearly, Julia. Um, first of all, does each district set its own goal? Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned that we're like one of the, the second lowest district in terms of contribution. Yes. What is the national average? Oh, I'll have to do research on that. I, I can I can answer I can answer at least Judy from the three districts that it's involved in our zone, and that is 6220, 6250, and 6270. Uh, as Shruti mentioned, we're at seventy roughly seventy dollars uh, per member. Uh, 6250 is at about ninety five, and excuse me, 6270 is about ninety five, and 6250 is at one hundred and twenty. So. Um, we're, we're way behind. I mean, we're, we're having a great year. It's done really well. We're at $70, but we're way behind the other districts. It's important for us to know that comparison because it is relative. It, it's relative because these are all districts within our, the same, the state of Wisconsin. And, and they, they're all way, way above where we are. Way above. So, I'm just going to say that it's seven o'clock. Um, this is really, a, it, unless there's any more grant tr uh, questions, it really concludes our grant training. And um, if you've, I mean, we can carry on the conversation, but I just want to allow people to leave if they want to leave. Um, so feel free to keep discussing. I'm here. And, you know, Nancy, any, if I, oh, you know what I wanted to say? Sometimes our two committees are don't have enough members. And if any of you are interested in being on a review committee, um, let us know. And Nancy and I are yes. both here for consultation on the grants. And Nancy, Absolutely. do you want to, any final comments? Um, I just appreciate the turnout that we had. It looks like we've had around 40, 40 people attend. Um, really appreciate that very much. Please don't forget about tomorrow night, the global grants, because you'll need to be a part of that in order to participate, even if you're not yourself running it. Um, and it looks like Barbara has her hand raised. Yeah, I just want to confirm the time tomorrow. Is it, it's an hour later, um, our time, uh, correct? Sally's, oh. Tomorrow's global grant training is 6 p.m. Central Time. Okay, that's what right. I thought. Okay, thanks. And, and uh, before we leave, I want to make sure that I thank uh, Nancy and Sally for putting this together. I, I thought the training was excellent. It was very, very well thought out, and I think gives a lot of information to everybody to uh, create uh, more and more grants going forward. Thank you. I have everybody. a quick question, too, and it is based on the esteem in which I hold Sally for her comments and certainly Nancy as well. But before we vote on raising the minimum contribution to qualify for grants from 50 to $75, which I just assume does make sense because we're at $69 now, is there objection from either of you to doing that? that will help us make a more informed decision. It is, for me, it's not an objection to do it. I just know that fewer clubs will qualify for grants. But when I say that, it's generally, I get applications for often the same clubs anyway. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, it, it, you know, personally with our club, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a bigger ask personally for my, for my club and we'll just step up to that challenge. Um, but, you know, I, I, I guess I'm real neutral on it. It's just, I know that there will be fewer, and Tom knows how many clubs actually, I think we had this conversation, how many clubs qualify right now for this round of funding and how many clubs we have in the district, and that will probably decrease. And I'm going to agree with uh, what Sally said. I will tell you what my club is doing. We are holding a social um, in a few weeks. And at that social, we are going to, we're calling it a working social. We are setting, um, for those who do not have the automatic withdrawal for the Rotary Foundation, we're setting it up for those that are oh. interested. <laughs> and we're doing it with the, I mean, honestly, I don't think that, that many people would miss five or $10 a month 
and that would qualify each individual. So, well, five would right. be You know, I think we've got a group of people on this call right now whose clubs all qualify. So we're already almost there. You know, right. it's, it's the other clubs that are not here because they know they already don't qualify that I think are our challenge. Right, and what I wanna add is, remember that's per club, uh, 50 or now, which we may move to here in July is uh, 75. 75. That's per club per capita. And there are, okay. there are people who have deeper pockets and they they contribute and that goes to, to the greater cause. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. yeah. Uh, just to give you an idea, the new Paul Harris uh, fellowship incentive that we started uh, our target is 40, and uh, yesterday Tom informed me we are at 27 already, and we still have three months to go, and I feel very optimistic about it. And let me echo one more thing that Sally said. Most of you who are here are the clubs who have participated and continue to participate in both district grants and the district uh, project fund. So you bring enormous experience and motivation if you could join and work on those two committees, which give out the district committee, you know, district grants and DPF. Your experience is valuable. Your perspective is important. So please give it a thought. And uh, I, I feel very many times, Sally, keep on doing it. Nancy, keep on doing it. And I, I think we need people who share that. Uh, it's a pleasant burden you are giving away money, so please consider that. Does anybody have any other questions regarding 